when all else fails, rub some grubby mix on it. Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today I have a fun what would you make challenge. I have this piece of wood. It's a big block of wood I got for $4 at Goodwill. And I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I've had it in my stash for quite a while. And I want to do something with it today. So it's uh, got this nice indentation on the top and I want to use that for a holder. So I'm just sanding it down. I took the tag off and sanding down a little spot that was a little darker and uh, getting rid of all that gunk that's on it. Wiped it off and now I'm taking my dark stain that I make. I make this with my uh, Waverly uh, antique wax. I take an eight ounce jar and I put that in a separate jar. I add eight ounces of water to that and I mix those two together along with about a tablespoon of black paint. Now this creates a dark stain that I just love and I use this quite a bit in my or rather on my projects. Now I found this really beautiful pineapple uh, wallpaper border at a flea market recently and it was only like $3 for the roll and I absolutely love it. So I thought it was very primitive and I had to use it and for some reason that block of wood came to mind and along with this border so we're going to use it today so i'm going to put it on the front of the block of wood so i had to rip it down a little bit and i wanted to use the whole piece because i just love it but you still get the gist of what it is even though i've ripped the pieces now i made it kind of an organic rip i didn't want it cut straight so i'm actually tearing it and i think this looks really good on the front of that piece of wood and um, it just gives it a a nice aged look now this is pre-pasted wallpaper border but i think it's just old and the paste was not very good uh, so i did wet it like i was supposed to i put it on and i was not happy with how it was sticking i wanted it to stick really well so i just grabbed some of my uh, mod podge and decided to just Mod Podge the whole thing down. So I lifted it up a little here and there and I just added the Mod Podge and then uh, that made it stay down a lot better. So now I'm just taking, once it dried a little bit, I'm taking a little bit of Mod Podge and going over the top as well, making sure I hit all those edges so that they don't curl up because that's what they were trying to do before. And um, that made that uh, so much easier to stick. Now I have this huge rolling pin. This thing is big and I've had it for a while and I wasn't going to decorate it. I was going to leave it natural, but I just want to use it for this project. So I sanded off a couple little spots. There was a sticker on there probably from the uh, secondhand store and I sanded that off a little bit and then I'm painting with my mustard fusion mustard paint the little handles and I will be distressing these later on and adding some wax to make them look aged but I did both sides and I did two coats on those and now I'm going to take my aged antique wax that I mix up and I'm going to put that onto the raw wood of this rolling pin. So I just brush it on and then wipe it back. And I love this color and I love the, you can see the knots and the wood grain underneath this um, stain. It just looks so cool. Now here I'm sanding down those handles and uh, just distressing them like I said I was going to do. And then I'm taking my brush and I'm going to go over it with my antique wax and uh, just darken up those spots that I've sanded off and darken up that mustard paint a little bit. So I just brush it on and then wipe it back. And I love the look this gives. It's so, so cool. So primitive. And so then, uh, so I wanted to match it up with the pineapple a little bit more. It's a little bit darker, but it really doesn't match 100%, but that's okay. We're going to fix it up. It'll be fine. So I did break out my Cricut, and I have only used this a few times, but I'm just showing you what I'm doing here. I 
put uh, some sticky paper, I guess. I don't, I don't know the term because I'm not really up on it. But I did get this at the flea market and uh, I have only used it a few times and I wanted to make a stencil. So I put sticky paper on a sticky pad, mat, uh, and just suck that into the machine. Uh, made my letter size what I wanted, which is two inch. And then I had it print out primitive with a capital P. So now I've hit cut and it's going to cut my uh, paper or my sticky stuff there and um, it's cutting it out so that it spells primitive. And this is so, so cool. I know it doesn't look like much here, but just you wait. It's so awesome. I don't know why I don't use this more. But um, I got the sticky stuff from, it's just from Dollar Tree. I, I didn't want to spend a lot of money on this stuff because uh, I don't use it a lot and I'm not really good at it. So this is clear tape, also from Dollar Tree. And you're supposed to put it over the top of your whatever you've had cut out. And that's supposed to help you when you reapply it to whatever you're going to be stenciling. So I'm putting this on over the top and then I will remove it, uh, remove the whole piece from uh, the sticky pad here. And then uh, once I did that, I pulled off the, uh, the white paper on the back, the backing, and that makes my... It, that's the sticky part in the back. So I'm just using my, I think they call it a weeding tool. And if I'm wrong, sorry. But, uh, and I just pull using that to pull off the little pieces. So now I'm pulling off the backing where it's going to make it sticky. So it'll stick to my material. I have a little piece of drop cloth here that I'm going to uh, stencil on. And so I'm just putting that on there where I want it to be. And then you just want to make sure you rub it down so it sticks really well. Because when you, obviously when you go to stencil it, you don't want your paint to go out underneath. You want it to stay where you want it. So I just made sure that was down really well. And then I just slowly pulled my clear tape back off from the stencil. And that just took a little bit of work, but not too, too bad. It actually stuck pretty well. It was just a few little spots that I needed to kind of stick my finger in there and hold it down while I was pulling. But um, I found if you laid the clear down and pulled it so that it was just right parallel with the, the stencil, it worked really well. And then, yep, my little dot on my E. I was trying to make sure that stayed on there. And there we go, there is my stencil. And I'm just taking some Waverly ink paint and I'm using using that on my stencil. So I just put a little bit on a plate and just dabbing that paint on there. I'm using a little makeup sponge to put the paint on and that seemed to work really well. I did use my heat gun on my stencil a little bit to dry the paint before I pulled it off. I didn't want it to smudge or smear if I touched it. So uh, it is dry where I'm pulling this off because it is pretty sticky stuff. So I just need to use that weeding tool again to uh, pull off the little, the little pieces. And I think it came out great. I love this. I love this script too. It's stone script. I think I tell you earlier on, but just wanted to let you know. So I'm just gluing on some black and tan material onto my rolling pin. Now this video is part of the What Would You Make collaboration with several other folks that will be joining in. Such a creative group of people that do these collaborations and I just love it. This is put on by Zaina at uh, OK at Home DIY, Bonnie's Wood Shop and DIYs, and Deco Easy is the guest host. So make sure you go down in the description and check out the playlist and check out these wonderful creators. I glued on the black and tan material to my rolling pin and now I'm going to take my cloth that I had stenciled primitive on and I'm going to put that over the top. So I'm just hot gluing that on. I just want to leave a little bit of the black and tan sticking out on the edge. So that gives it just another layer to it. Well, then I took a couple pieces of my, I think it's butter yellow pit berries 
and I made a little messy bow with some material, my black and tan material, some of the drop cloth that I had left over, and a little bit of a ribbon from, I think it was Dollar Tree. They have some really pretty ribbon there. So I'm just gluing that all onto the top, and I probably should have waited on this part because I, you know, as you're creating, you just cha things change, and I wanted to distress my, uh, even though it was tea stained, I wanted to distress my drop cloth. So I'm just taking some coffee tea stain that I made up and a little brush. I stirred it up really well because it's got all kinds of good stuff in there. And I'm just putting that onto the material to just make it look more aged and distressed. And I didn't like that distressed enough, so I grabbed my grubby mix. This is just cinnamon and a, a, apple, not apple spice, pumpkin spice and all cloves and all the wonderful spices. And I just rubbed that in and then just lightly brushed it off with a brush so that I didn't have too, too much on there. So I made another stencil uh, for the pineapple wood part and I want it to say welcome. Now when it printed out, it printed uh, to the O and then it went down below it and had the M E. So I had to cut it and kind of splice it together. So I decided I would just do the W E L C O and then I'll come back once that's done dry and I'll put in the other part just so that I don't touch something I'm not supposed to touch and I want to make sure I get it lined up right. But I think this came out really, really well. The only thing that I would say is I went a little too dark with my paint. I wanted it to show and come through, but it doesn't look very worn, which is kind of my thing, which is what I like. I like it to look old and distressed. Uh, and I guess I could have sanded it. Instead, I just took a little bit of antique wax right out of the bottle and I put it on my sign just in certain spots. And then when I wipe it back, it'll definitely, it will just go back. It'll go all over the sign, basically. But I just wanted it to look aged. So I'm doing more of a tamping effect to give it that aged look. And I think I really like how this came out. Hope you liked my primitive welcome pineapple sign and don't forget to go down and check out the what would you make playlist it will be down in the description or pinned to the top of the comments i appreciate you watching have a great day